All right, back again, Luke here, and uh, this is the third time I've tried to make this video here. My uh, camera keeps uh, dying on me. I don't know what's going on. It just says file read error, but uh, taking a look at this Super Famicom box here, uh, as promised, what I thought I'd do today is show you what the inside of this thing looks like. And uh, I did try and get these barrel locks to open up, but uh, I wasn't successful on doing that. If you notice on the corners here, they have uh, four pins on the side there, but this thing just did not want to open for the life of me. So. What I decided to do instead is uh, I went down, I picked up my uh, my security bit screwdriver that's used for Super Nintendo uh, or Super Famicom, and uh, what I did is I removed the screws here. There's two, four, six of them uh, along this bottom here, and once I took those out, what I did is just pulled up lightly on the top of here. There's a little bit of a ledge, and uh, was able to get the top part out. Now the uh, previous owner here uh, looks like they tried to uh, crack the casing a little bit. I don't know if you'll be able to see that on the inside there or not. Probably not so well. But uh, the inside of the casing here is cracked around the uh, the barrel locks. Let's see if I can get a good shot. There, you can kind of see it's cracked around the side there. But uh, the thing wouldn't open up, and the main reason why is because uh, these things are attached to a metal frame, uh, if you can see on the back here, and some really small tabs that hold it in place. But uh, even if you were to crack the plastic on here and break the plastic, there's no way to get it off because the plastic is held on by these screws in the middle here and also held on the screws in the bottom uh, with these barrel locks as well. But if you remove the screws from the bottom here, these are the same size screws as the uh, Super Famicom or Super Nintendo. And I was attempting to try and take the screws off of the side here, but I don't know if you'll be able to notice this or see this or not. If you take a look at the size difference here, these things on the side are just massive. These are just huge. And I have nothing this size at all to try and take the casing apart, so I wasn't able to get those out. But uh, like I said, I was able to open up the front here, and uh, this thing has uh, two carts in it. I actually have one of the carts out right now. But uh, if you take a look in the back there, this thing is uh, pressed in by an IDE cable. Or those things are held in by an IDE cable that's attached to the bottom board down there at the bottom. I don't know if you can see that. But uh, on these carts here, they run on rails. There are two rails here. And uh, there's these two plastic tabs. And by pulling on these two plastic tabs, you can pull the carts out. Now, these carts are massive. Um, if you take a look at the cart here, you probably can't notice too much, I mean, from the video. But to give you an, a little bit of an idea, here's a Neo Geo cart. And Neo Geo carts are, you know, basically the size of a hand. They're, they're pretty massive, uh, pretty large. And anybody who has a Neo Geo would know that these things are not small. But if you put this on top of this, let's move it all the way up to the top, you can see how much bigger this is over the Neo Geo cart. I mean, anything that makes a Neo Geo uh, cart look small is just unbelievably huge. And these things are huge. Uh, this one here on the top, it says uh, Star Fox, Super Mario Kart, and then uh, Super Mario Collection. And the other one that I pulled out, it's actually yellow. This one says... Uh, uh, Super Tetris and then uh, Super Donkey Kong but what I was in the process of doing here I was attempting to try and show you guys before my camera died out is I want to do something kind of a, a little bit further on it and see what makes these things tick so what I attempted to do is I took these screws out as you can see there's three six seven screws in the back and those are all the same size as the uh, the Super Famicom or Super Nintendo screws I just wound up getting them out but uh, I haven't been able to uh, open this thing up yet. And uh, let's see if I can get this thing to open without the camera dying. Hopefully it'll work. I'm really interested in seeing what's on the inside of this thing. Um, as you can see on the end here, it's got a sticker. And I think this is one of those protective stickers that says, you know, basically uh, make sure the cassette is in before turning the power on. But let's open this back up here and see what's inside. Wow. That is big. That is just one massive circuit board. Let's see if we can take this thing out. All right. Well, you can see here that there's one EEPROM on it. This is GROM. And uh, I'm curious. I don't know. Um, I know there are some people out there that have modified Neo Geo uh, carts and things to work. But I'm wondering if uh, just by removing this uh, EEPROM here, if you could flash a new EEPROM and get this thing to play multiple different games. It's just a, an idea here. But as you can see, this is what the board looks like. just has uh, just three ROMs on it. 
well, three ROMs, and then it has a, uh, a security ROM here, or the uh, um, IC. But that's, that's all that makes this thing up. Pretty impressive stuff. You can see on the back here, this thing looks like it's a little bit dirty. Um, what's interesting about this, though, is um, this is the Donkey Kong Country setup, and uh, I don't see a battery on here at all. And uh, the machine itself, uh, for Donkey Kong Country, it does have save spots, so I'm wondering if the, uh, the machine itself somewhere in the back there has a battery or not. Um, can't see here very much, but uh, on the side here, uh, if you look at this tab here on the side, there's nothing uh, behind that whatsoever. That probably did hook into a couple of these uh, empty cables, uh, or these uh, open cable slots here on the board, but uh, there's nothing in there as of right now. But I'm really curious how this uh, game is supposed to save. I know it's not saving any of the games as of right now, so I'm wondering if that's a... Uh, if behind the board here, somewhere in the, the very back, if there is a battery somewhere uh, that saves the games, maybe it's just a coin battery that wound up dying off. I'd really like to get on the inside of this thing, but um, like I said, getting this casing off is pretty much impossible for the moment. But uh, at least the inside of the, uh, the cart here you can see, and I don't know what this is. I don't know if this is just grease or what, but all the games play fine. Uh, there's no problems with them at all, but uh, yeah, this is what makes up the inside of the uh, the games for this. Just one huge board. So it looks like uh, you could potentially turn this into something pretty awesome. Um, the EEPROM that's on the side here. Let's see if you can get the code for anyone who's interested in it. I don't know if that's going to focus in. Kind of see the uh, the problem that's used for this, but um, yeah, that's uh, that's what makes up the inside of these cards. That's pretty impressive. Just wasn't expecting that. <laughs> Hopefully, one of these days when I can get uh, a larger bit, I don't know where I'm going to find one. Probably online or something. Uh, I'd like to try and take this casing apart and find out a little bit more about it. Actually, maybe we'll turn this thing around. Let's see if there's any other screws that we can take off. Haven't. Uh, I haven't messed around with this thing too much right now. I just uh, was able to get the front cover off, so I thought I'd go from there. Let's see if there's anything else that can be removed on the back here. This has the same size screws. Mm. Looks like the uh, the power supply unit can be pulled out. Uh, I'm trying to check here. It looks like this thing kind of slides out. Wow, that is wild. So here is the uh, the power supply. That thing just pulls right out of there. And uh, that is really wild. And uh, there's a wire here that's connected to the side here that plugs into the back here for the DC power. Um, I, uh, looking at the way that it is, uh, the way that it's set up here, even if you didn't have a power supply on the back here, I assume you could just plug in the uh, 5 volts here, 5 volts, 5 amps, and be able to uh, power it this way because this is only connected through this. That's it. Other than that, it's just a big ho uh, hollow space. But it's pretty wild. Kind of dissecting my unit here. You can see on the bottom there, there's nothing really inside. I can't really see in the back there too much, but uh, I wish there was a, a way to get on the inside there, just so I could see if there is a battery somewhere on the inside that maybe causes this thing to uh, save and or allows you to save your files. Because I've tried to save uh, now about four times on Donkey Kong Country and tried to save uh, a couple of times on some of the uh, Super Mario games, but wasn't able to save on any of them. Uh, and uh, every time we turn the power off and turn it back on again, it's pretty much cleared out, so I don't know. I'll have to do a little bit more research on the inside there, see if I can get a flashlight and get uh, get more at the, the back of this thing. Maybe I'll try and bite the bullet and see if I can use a pair of pliers or something to get these bigger ones out and uh, see if I can get the casing off that way. But 
Anyway, just want to give you guys a little bit of a look here at uh, what the carts look like, what the inside looks like here for this uh, Super Famicom box. Like I said, these carts are really, really huge here, but uh, really interesting setup. And uh, on the inside there, just having that one uh, EEPROM that's uh, holding everything together, that's really cool. But Yeah, that's about all for me for right now. Like always, I'll put up another video here soon, so thanks for watching.